All right, party people, hope you guys are doing awesome today. I realized that I hadn't made an AR-15 cleaning video on my channel before, and I don't know why I haven't, but I wanted to go over the easiest way to clean AR-15s, and I also wanted to show you something that most people forget when they're cleaning their AR-15s, and that one thing that a lot of people forget happens to be one of the most important things to clean whenever you have an AR-15. And so this is a Daniel Defense uh, 13.5 pin and welded. This is the DDM4 V7 SLW. They sent this out for testing and evaluation. Um, if you've been watching this channel, throughout the year, you'll know that I'm dedicating, you know, 2022, you know, to testing just different types of AR-15s. And then at the end of the year, we can do like a comparison between all the ones that we've tested. Now, this is one of the first T&E guns that I've received. Typically the way it works is, you know, if a company's gonna send out a gun, they send out a brand new gun for you to test and review. And then sometimes they let you keep it. Sometimes they make you send it back. But this one has been fired before and I have no idea how many rounds have been through it. And so before I go fire it, I kind of wanted to go through this gun and make sure that everything looks copacetic, make sure everything in the bolt looks good. I'm also publishing this video to my online course. And for those of you that aren't aware, I have an online course for how to build AR-15s and how to build Glocks and all that cool stuff. The reason I had to create a course is you're not allowed to build stuff on YouTube but you are allowed to show people how to clean things. So this will also be going on the course. If you're interested in the course, I'll put a link in the description for you. Just in case you're brand new, we need to go over the basic rules of gun safety, but I'll be very quick about it. Uh, number one, always keep your firearm pointed in a safe direction. And what a safe direction means is you want your muzzle pointed in a direction where there is no persons, animals, or objects that you don't want destroyed. So you should always treat guns as if they're loaded until you check otherwise. Keep your trigger finger off the trigger until you're ready to actually fire. Be certain of your target and what's beyond the other side of the target and always wear appropriate eye and ear protection, um, you know, whenever you're working on these things. And we'll go over some of that stuff here in a minute for like protection gear to clean with. This does have a safety chamber flag in it, but to check your weapon, like I said, if you are new to AR-15s, if there's no flag in yours, you're simply gonna grab it. You're gonna pull back like so, and you're gonna look down into the chamber, make sure there's no rounds in there. You can stick your pinky in, make sure there's no mag right here, and then let the bolt go home. Now that we got that out of the way, there are gonna be some things in this video that a lot of people are gonna argue about in the comment section below, and that's fine. And the reason I say that is there are multiple right ways to clean a rifle. There really is, like there's multiple right tools to use. There's multiple types of cleaners and all those kinds of things. And I just say all that to say this, just because someone does it differently doesn't mean that that person's wrong. Or just because I do it differently doesn't mean that I'm wrong. There's more than one way to skin a cat. Now, one of the first things that I do suggest that you have is some kind of nitrile or latex gloves. I'll have links down in the description for this stuff and anything else that we need to talk about. So follow the first link in the description. You can find a place where you can get these gloves and other stuff that we talk about. But the reason you wanna get some nitrile gloves or some kind of PPE for your hands is because of lead. Lead won't absorb through your skin unless you have like a cut or something and lead gets on it. So it won't get into your bloodstream. The particle size is way too large for it to absorb into skin unless it's organic lead, which we don't have in nature. And you're not gonna be dealing with organic lead at all while you're cleaning a firearm. However, it is very difficult to get it off of your hands. I use this stuff called D-Lead um, whenever I go to the range. And I also use it when I'm done cleaning my guns because there have been multiple tests and I've seen YouTube videos, not for gun stuff, but just for de-leading hands. You can wash your hand with Gojo. You can wash your hands with Dawn dish soap, whatever the case is, they can actually scrub your hands and then they could take a testing kit and test for lead on the surface of your hand. And a lot of times that stuff's not good enough to get it off. So I'll include some links to where you can get those wipes and they also make a particular soap for it as well. It's important to de-lead your, you know, all the way up to like here, basically, whenever you're done, even if you are wearing gloves, because although it can absorb into your skin, if you scratch your eye, scratch your nose, bite your nails, eat with your hands, what have you, even if you've washed your hands, you can get lead poisoning. And believe me when I tell you, it's a very difficult condition to cure because it's very difficult to get the lead out of your system without removing other trace minerals that you need for functioning like magnesium and zinc and things of that nature. So be, be very careful with lead. Now, speaking of things that are kind of safe and stuff like that, um, I use Shooter Lube for my solvent and my oil. The reason I use it is it's non-toxic. There's no residues. You could literally eat this stuff 
eco-friendly, but my main reasoning for using it is it doesn't give me a headache. Most other solvents and CLPs give me a headache. There's some that smell good, and there's some that smell like cleaners, but this has zero smell, no odor at all, and I like that. Now, this is what I use when I'm cleaning in the house. Now, when I'm out in the field, I will use some of this Lucas Extreme Gun Oil, uh, you know, for lubing up my guns, but when I'm outside, I don't really smell this and it doesn't give me a headache. So I do have 5% promo code for Shooter Lube if you are interested, again, first link in the description. But it really doesn't matter what you're gonna use, this is just what I prefer to use. Some people use a one-step solution like a CLP, which is cleaning, lubricant, and protectant. And for me, I, when I'm doing a deep clean, I like to separate the two, have a solvent, then I have the lube for later. There are tons of great options out there for lubes and solvents. You know, if you're on a tight budget, go get yourself some motor oil and some Simple Green. Use the Simple Green as your solvent, take off all the carbon buildup and everything, and then use some motor oil. It doesn't really matter. Another tool that I use is some kind of rip cord. This is the Otis rip cord. I also have some of these that are called the Boar Snake. Uh, either one will do. This simply is gonna run down the length of our barrel, strip out the, some of the carbon buildup within the rifling. Another thing I use is a plastic bristled brush. This allows me to scrape the carbon off without really marring up the finish of the, uh, the parts of the gun. Another part that I use, this is a Real Avid uh, AR-15 tool. Just a FYI, guys, I'm gonna have a lot of stuff from Real Avid. Real Avid didn't give me any of this. I paid for all of this with my own money. That wouldn't affect my opinion if they did send it to me. But I just get heads up, you're gonna see a lot of real avid stuff. And the only reason I have a lot of real avid stuff is their stuff works pretty good for me. So this is a pretty cool little tool. This has a brass bristled slash nylon bristled brush built into it. I like this tool a lot and we'll go over this tool more as we get to using it because it has a lot of really nifty features in it. Another tool that I use is this block here. If you have a vise, you can use this block to go into here. It simply goes into there, you clamp it into your vise and it will hold your gun up while you're cleaning it. And then this piece back here will hold the receiver up, I'll show you in a second, so that we can actually you know, clean the bore of the gun effectively. Now this is the one that most people forget right here is cleaning the chamber of their barrel when they're cleaning their AR-15. I've seen a lot of people clean their bolt carrier group very thoroughly. They strip out the leading and all that stuff in their barrel, but then they forget the chamber. If that chamber gets fouled up with carbon, one of the main culprits to catastrophic failures in the AR-15, it's not the only, but it is one big one, is that gets, that gets fouled up, the bolt won't seat all the way, then you fire it, and because that's not seated, boom. So that's a very important part to clean. And then you're also gonna get like some mi microfiber towels and stuff like that. So let's move everything over to the bench vise. That's just how we're gonna do it today. Uh, you could just do it flat on a surface, but I find for getting good angles for video, it might be better if we do it that way. Now, given that you've already cleared your AR-15, and you know for a fact that there's nothing in the chamber, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna use this vise block right here. You just simply put it in and then you twist it. And what it does is it tightens it so it won't slip around while it's on the vise. And this is the uh, Real Avid Master Bench Block. I've talked about it in a previous video. Uh, this vise has a special section cut out on it to hold this bench block. So that's always good. Simply gonna punch out this rear takedown pin, just like this. And I'm gonna allow this to come up just a little bit. I'm gonna take this little piece right here. It's gonna hook right in there. Then you push it back down. What this will do is it's gonna give me the ability to take out not only this bolt carrier group that we're gonna clean in a second, take out the charging handle. In addition to that, it's gonna give us clear access all the way down our barrel and to our chamber. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of this solvent here, doesn't matter what solvent we're using, and I'm gonna spray down into here, get that chamber nice and saturated, and then some of that residual is gonna run down the barrel. At the end of the muzzle where you can't see, I do have a microfiber towel folded up to catch anything that drips out the end of the muzzle, but that's it, just spray in there. You can even come back this far and spray down into there. Now on this piece right here, I forgot the name of it, but it is made by a co the company Otis. It's an extended tool here, and on the end of it, it has a screw that comes off. And this little piece right here that looks like cotton is replaceable and it comes with these different cotton pieces and they are shaped like the chamber. And so this simply extends, you press this button here, that extends out. And then what this we do is we come from the back right here and we're able to clean our chamber. 
And not only that, each one of those little nubs that's on the end of this pad will clean out the lug for the grooves. Let me see if I can get a better angle for you. Now, I don't know how well you can see this, but you can simply go right down into it just like that and just twist it. And then you can twist it again and you can make sure that you get every single groove um, of your lugs by twisting this. And then you put it all the way in and twist it. And that's what's gonna clean out the majority of the carbon buildup in your chamber. All right, so then you can either use one of these rip cords or you can use a bore snake or you can use a rod with a patch. It doesn't really matter. But we've had time to let the solvent, you know, really settle in in the barrel and run out the end. So then what I'm gonna do, you do need to be sure if you do pick these up, they are caliber specific. So make sure you get the one for your caliber. But you're just gonna feed it in like so. Then you're gonna walk to the other side of your gun at the muzzle end and you're gonna pull it through. And typically I will pull this thing through two or three times, depending on how dirty the barrel is. Then I will take a small flashlight and I will shine it at an angle at the muzzle end of the barrel. And then I can eyeball it from this end. You can see that indeed the chamber is quite clean. And this is gonna be a little more difficult for you to see. But if I shine my light kind of at an angle down here, you can start seeing the threads. And this is how you're gonna make sure. It's so much easier with the eyeball than it is this camera, but I think you guys get the point. All right, so now that we've got the barrel and the chamber clean, now we can focus on the bolt carrier group. So typically the way that I do this is I will disassemble it, then we're gonna soak it down with a solvent, let it sit, wipe it down, and then we're gonna lube everything back up. So using this tool right here, there's a little switch right here that comes out and it's got a little hook on it. And that little hook, is so that we can pull this pin out, called our cotter pin, and that pulls it out nice and easily. Then I'm simply gonna push the tip of this in, hit it just like so, and then our firing pin comes out. Then we can turn our cam pin right here, just like that. Then you just slam it on your hand, and the cam pin comes out. Then we can pull the bolt straight out. And now it's completely disassembled. Now I'm gonna take my solvent, doesn't matter which one you use, and I'm gonna soak down this carrier. Then I'm gonna spray the inside right here, just like so. Then I'm gonna soak down this guy, our firing pin. You can see a lot of carbon buildup back here towards the rear of it. We'll address that in a second. Spray down our cam pin on all sides. Then we're gonna get this bolt we're gonna get it soaked up really good. And sometimes, you know, hey, for giggles, I'm just going to soak down that uh, cotter pin as well. I'm gonna use this tool again. Or if you don't have that tool and you just want a nylon brush, you can use that too. So this tool here has a lot of different things. Uh, this pin punch right here is so that you can push out the takedown pins on your rifle. This is your brush. This little piece in the center is for cleaning this part of your bolt. So. We're gonna go through these one at a time and I'll show you how this tool cleans it. So number one, we can take the tail. This is called the tail of our bolt. And you can put it down into here where these brass bristles are and you can just twist it. Or you can go in and out like that. Not a huge deal, but it's gonna get it a lot of that carbon off of there very nicely. And it won't get quite all of it, but it's gonna get quite a bit of it. If we move to right here, that piece is gonna come up. There's gonna be these little sections right here, and that's gonna be for these lugs right here. And you can just simply scrape your lugs just like this and get each individual lug clean, however clean or not clean you wanna make it. And once you get your cams clean, you just kinda of wanna inspect this face right here. I don't believe there's a specific tool on this that cleans this face, but I'll just take a brush and I will clean that out. And then I also like to take something like this uh, cotter pin, and I just test that spring for the ejector there. And I just wanna make sure that that spring still has pretty good tension on it. Um, you can also go back here behind your extractor and, and make sure that that's not all gummed up. And then we can go back here to the tail, and I'm just gonna wipe this whole thing down with a microfiber. And we can see that it, it's getting pretty clean. Um, if you're really anal about it, you could take this scraper right here and you can kind of go further down. Um, it's not really gonna make a big difference, honestly, but you can if you choose to. So basically our bolt is now done. Now we can move on to the cam pin. So right here is a tool for the cam pin where this little U notch is. And you simply hold your cam pin like this. You simply slide it back and forth and turn it as you go. Then we're gonna move to the firing pin here and there is a hole dedicated right here to this firing pin. You just drop it in and then you twist it. And what it's supposed to do 
And it kind of does it pretty good as it gets most of the carbon loosened up that gets stuck. You know, you'll get a lot of carbon that really sticks back here. And what that does is it really helps loosen it, loosen it up. And you just kind of pull it and twist. Then you can take your brush and you could use the small side of the bristles here. And you can also get a lot of that carbon off. And this tends to be a stubborn area. And honestly, guys, like I'm not saying to do this or not do it. Some people are like, don't use flat heads. I will use a flat head and just twist it and very lightly scrape some carbon off right there. That's just something I do. I'm not saying that you should do it, but I do it. Never had a problem with it. Now we're gonna move to the, I'm just gonna wipe down the outside with a microfiber first. Again, this extension right here is made to go inside of here and it is a carbon scraper. We're just gonna go inside and scrape it out. And you can see we got a little bit of carbon out, but now we gotta lube it. Now, before we get this thing put back together, we're gonna, I'm gonna oil up this uh, charging handle right here. I simply just take a little bit of oil. I take a little bead down the top of it, especially down here where it's raised up. Take a little bead down the side, especially on these notches. Now I'll take another bead down the other side. Then I'm just gonna take my finger, lube that guy up. So for our bolt, there's a, there is some things that I wanna test here. Over time, as you're shooting your AR-15, this hole here on the bolt is one of your weakest points, and so is this cam pin. And sometimes that right here, it can actually stretch a little bit from being shot a lot. And so a lot of times I like to take my cam pin and place it in and then see how much play I have in here. I will test this when I first get the gun before I ever shoot it to see how much play it has. It has a tiny bit of play, but I can't tell you if that's changed since this gun was new because this is a TNE gun. Rocking motion. It's so tiny you can't see it, but you can feel it in the tips of your fingers. Just something to keep a note on, um, especially when it's your own gun and you can kind of, you know, keep track of that as your gun wears and tears. Then I'm gonna take some lube and you're gonna see a little band that's right here. I'm just gonna put a little lube on that band. And that band is what's gonna contact inside of your carrier here. And I'll put a little bit on the inside of the carrier as well. Some people might say not to, but that's what I do. And we're gonna just take that. We're gonna make sure the extractor is facing the outside of this bolt. Then we're gonna take our pin, put it back in, we're gonna twist it. Then we're gonna take our firing pin. We're gonna drop it in from the rear. Just let it fall into place. Then we're gonna take our cotter pin, put that back into place. Now I'm gonna oil this entire thing up. And the cool thing about AR-15s, really you can't have too much oil. If you notice right here, there are shiny spots. And that's where there's a lot of friction. So you definitely wanna make sure you're putting a lot of oil right there. But I just put it over the whole thing, to be honest. Especially right here on this uh, cam pin, there's a lot of friction there and at the top of these pads. But I like getting my, my bolts just nice and soaked. And then I take my pinky or whatever finger and I just start rubbing it in. I don't wanna get any oil into these holes right here. These are gas ports, these are not oiling points. I've seen people say like, oh, you just put oil in there though. That's where gas escapes. So don't put oil in those holes, please. And then I'm even gonna take a little bit more and I'm gonna put it on this bolt right here, just a little bit. And I'm simply going to go in and out, in and out, get it worked in. Another thing I'm gonna test is I wanna make sure that the staking on my, they aren't backing out, these are properly staked. I mean, it should be, this is Daniel Defense. So hopefully they did a good job. Now we can reassemble it, kind of start down here a little bit and there is a catch point where it will pop up and just go in a little bit further. Then we're gonna take our bolt carrier and we're gonna make sure that the bolt is in the extended position. Put it in like so and then close it. Now, before we put this thing completely back together, you know, if you find yourself having a gritty trigger and stuff like that, it might be because it's really dirty. And so, if you hold your thumb here, pull the trigger, let the hammer go home forward, you can kind of just inspect down inside. Um, I don't see anything, but I'm gonna take a little bit of lube and you'll see this little face right there. I don't know how well you can see it, but this little shiny face, I'm gonna put some oil on that and that's gonna help my trigger not be so gritty. Then we can take our upper, place it back on and lock those, cycle it a few times. Remember to be safe. Know which way your muzzle's pointing when you pull this trigger. All right. I am really looking forward to reviewing this. I've seen a ton of hype around this gun. 
And I've also seen some people that said they didn't really care for this gun. So I'm excited to actually do a review on it in the future and compare it to some other AR-15s that we've been shooting in the past. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you wanna see that video and see those comparisons. Also, if you wanna join my online course for building things that we talk about on this channel, then I'll have a link down in the description. And the first link in the description will be where you can find all the cleaning products that we used. Anyways, guys, I love you. Hope you guys stay sexy.